Hello everyone. So today in this tutorial, I'm going to talk to you about the V4Q or first in, first RQ. Uh, this Q actually is a group of data that that are queuing in a buffer inside the memory in this arrangement. Okay, whereby you can see like we got a different slot from slot one to enter slot n, and in this queue, we are going to write uh, two main functions. The first function is the input functions, uh, which it will be responsible for pushing the data inside the queue, okay, to refill the data. For example, the first data will be pushed, will be come to slot one, second will be second, third, and uh, etc. And the second function is the output, whereby this function will be responsible of pulling out the data from the queue but in this type of queue which is first in first out the output function will be always take the first the first uh, data that's been pushed by the input function okay so for example now when it's push the first data will come to slot one slot two and slot three will be filled by the input function so the output will be pulling first the first slot then all the other data will be shifted. Then it will be pulled, the second one, third and fourth, etc. Okay, so we are going to implement this queue in Python. So let's get started. So let's go here to the Python environment where we can start write our code. So first of all, we are going to uh, to const construct a class for our queue, we name it as queue. Okay, so inside the class, we define the main initial self. Self dot items. Okay, we are still recording. Then we go to define another function called, let's say, this function is to check if the if the Q is empty. Okay, which it will return self dot items. This function should return a boolean, so you can see. Later, we can check whether this uh, this uh, queue is empty or no by using this function. Uh, then we can define a new function called in queue. This function will be responsible of pushing the data inside the queue. Uh, this function got uh, we'll take two arguments, self and item. Item is the one will be pushed inside the queue. So it will be pushing the item, the items, or inserting the item inside the queue, start from location zero and inserting the item okay uh, now we define the second uh, main function which is the out queue uh, this one for sure will take no argument because it will always return the first 
the first uh, data or the first uh, location of the of the queue. So out queue will be return self dot items dot pop to pop out the data the, the first data. Okay, well, then we have another function. Uh, let's call it, this function. We use it to know the size of the queue. So define size of self. This one will return the length of the uh, queue self dot items then let's define another function to print out the queue to print out the full data of the queue so let's call it print queue again this one take no uh, no argument just self uh, in this one, we have to loop for each item inside the loop and print it out on the screen. So we will use four items in self dot items. We need to print the items. Then I want to add a comma at the end of each item and at the end I need a space okay uh, now we are done with the queue okay this is the main uh, the main class for the queue again we initiate the Sorry, I guess here you need space. Yes, exactly. So first we initiate the, the queue. Then we define the empty function. This is to return true or false. Whether the, uh, the, if it's empty, we'll return true. If uh, got some items inside the queue, we'll return false. In queue, we'll, this function will be inserting the data to the queue. Output will be pop out the data from the queue, return the data to us, and size will return to us the length of the queue, and at the end we can print out the queue, the full length of the queue. So now, in order to access the queue, we make instance for the queue. We just name it queue equal to queue that we define. Now we can test any function of this. For example, let's uh, Let's try if let's check now if the the, the, the our queue is uh, empty or not. So we can use print q dot is empty. Okay, and again this one takes no argument. So now when we run this, we should see whether it's true or false. So since our our queue is empty now, so as we can see, it's true because it's empty. We got no any uh, data being pushed inside. So we can continue by uh, pushing some data inside. Uh, we can push data by calling the function named in queue. Okay. In queue, then we set or send the data that we want to push. For example, I want to push number one. Okay. Then I want to add another data. Q dot in queue. I want to push 22. Okay. Then I need to push another data. Q dot in queue. Let's say three, three, three. Okay. 
so now our buffer got all this uh, our queue got all this data <clears throat> so now when we try again to print the is empty function it should return false why because we already add some data inside it's empty Okay. Oh, so we got some in Q. Why list object attribute insert? Ah, sorry. Yeah, there's another extra T here. Okay. Sorry, I guess I've done mistake. This one should be insert. Okay. We might continue again. Yes, as we can see here first, when we when we print is empty first, the first time, it returned to us uh, false. Okay, we can run again. Mm, sorry, we run again. Okay, so when we run, it's empty. It's written false. Then when we add data inside, we add one, two, three, then it return false. Why? Because we already embed some data inside. So now we can continue. For example, to, to take out some data. Or before that, let's let's print out the print out the queue by using uh, queue dot print q so this function will print the q for us okay so this is our q now is 3 3 2 2 and 1 so this is our q we can see we have all the data inside now we can use the other function to pull the data from the queue by using <coughs> queue dot out queue but this one we cannot use you cannot use the function alone like this we should define a variable so we can uh, make use of the data that's been pulled from the queue let's <coughs> let's uh, name this uh, variable as my data equal to this so now my data is equal to the first uh, data that's been pushed inside the queue. So I can print my data, my data. So now I can see, I should see that my data is equal to one because this is the first data that's been pushed inside the queue. <clears throat> Okay, and here, but here, sorry, because we can see the one's been already added, looks like, to the queue because of the print function. So we can add a slash and first to start for the new <coughs> line, then print my data. Okay. Oh, sorry. Sorry, so again, should be slash n, not ln, yes. Okay, so we can see it's already uh, took the first data from the queue. Okay, took the first one from the queue. So now if we print the queue again, we should see only 22 and 333. Okay, let's print the queue again. Q dot print Q. Sorry, this one should be after. After this should be print the queue. So now we should see the queue without the, 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 the first number, which is the one. Because we already 
pull it out. Okay, see, now this is the, the last Q, the last value for the Q, which is 22 and 333 without the one, because we already pulled number one from the Q. So now we can add more. Let's say Q dot uh, in Q, let's add 10. Again, Q dot in Q, let's add 23. Now I want to print the Q again. We just call the function. Mm, ah, sorry. This function will print only the data. If you want to see the size, uh, the, the print queue, we should use the other function. We should use q dot print q. This is the function responsible to print the full queue, not only the data which has been assigned here. Okay, so here we can see the full queue after we add all the data inside. Just now we add 10 and 32. Okay. So we can see this is the 10 that we add. Then we add 32. Ah, sorry, this one is actually from the previous one. So we have to add, we have to print here. To make it more easy to be read, we just print new line. Yeah, now easy to be uh, to be follow. So this one actually is the uh, previous uh, previous print Q, which is 22 and 333. Then we add two numbers, which is 10 and 23. Then we print the queue again. Okay, so I guess we can try the, the last function, which is will return uh, the size of the queue. So we can try, again, let's print new line. Let's go to jump for the new line so we can understand what's going on. Then we can print the size of the of the queue print uh, print uh, q dot size so the last one should return to us the size of the queue how many data is been inside the queue and again as we can see here is four four data because the last uh, the last uh, queue size got only four data according to our code. Okay, so thank you very much. This is the end of our tutorial today. Uh, I hope you understand uh, what is the main function and how we can implement the queue or the first in, first out queue in Python language. Uh, thank you very much and see you soon for the other tutorials.